Vanadium is that partner to that. Vanadium sulfate is a supplement uh, uh, diabetics can take along with chromium, along with li alpha lipoic or R lipoic acid to regulate blood sugar and insulin levels. And it's quite effective and very cost effective. Believe it or not, small amounts of this trace element are important, nickel. And synergistic with magnesium for what? Bone formation. What's the other element really important for bone formation that I don't have up here? Boron, yeah, and another one, yeah. Calcium, the, ma the major ones are calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and silica. And trace element-wise, I'm talking here. Yeah, boron, you have this nickel. This is a big one. How about strontium? Strontium. And where do you find strontium in foods? Bone broth. It's found in the bone marrow. Strontium, really important. Silica, elephant standing in the, in the room again. Never think a coincidence is a coincidence. Silica is the most commonly found element on the face of the earth, the earth's crust. It's sand. You've got lots of silica in Florida. But do you have it available to the plant? It becomes available to the plant when the biology of the soil converts silica, inert silica, to orthosilicic acid. Now it's water-soluble silica, takes it up into the plant, and it forms a coating on the outside of the plant called the cuticle, which gives it fungal resistance, it gives it uh, uh, bacterial disease resistance, and insect resistance. Then the animals come along and eat this silica, and it com combines with calcium and magnesium and phosphorus and makes connective tissue and bone and teeth. Pancreas works better with silica. Hair is glossier with silica. They claim the reason why the Japanese have that really lustrous, silky, black raven looking hair is because they eat so much of a silica rich food called rice. As a matter of fact, in Japan, federal laws are you must put silica in the fertilizer because you can't grow rice very effectively without adequate amounts of soluble, soluble silica. In fact, some of the foliar sprays on the golf course are potassium or sodium silicate. So the Randall A. Farms, somebody mentioned Keenan being the North Carolinian guy who's um, cr uh, getting credit at, at, is it UNC or North Carolina State? UNC. Where's my Carolina connection? Is it UNC? It's UNC. UNC, not NC State, right? Right. UNC. So they name a sports arena after Keenan. Right. Keenan Street. Keenan Street after Keenan because he's from Carolina. And he was the raw milk champion in upstate New York, but no raw milk in Carolina. Okay. But this was, now, just to show you, 1940. Keenan at Randall A. Farms up in, near Buffalo, New York, worked with a doctor from um, Arkansas, no, southern Missouri, Dr. Ira Allison, an MD, who was reputed to be the miracle of the Ozarks because he was the only doctor that could cure a condition known as undulant fever. Raw milk, huh? Undulant fever. Bangs disease. Also known as brucellosis. Right? Incurable at that time. He cured it with these minerals right there. 322 patients, not one relapse in three and a half years. With a mineralized supplement in the diet. And then he took that mineralized supplement in the diet for people and said, why don't we just do this with cows? Because why are the cows getting Bangs disease? Nutrition. Not because they're cows. Obviously, they get Bangs disease because they're cows. And people then drink cow's milk, and they get Bangs disease because they drank cow's milk. That wasn't cooked. No, Bangs disease came from a malnutrition issue. And it was reversed with nutrition by Dr. Ira Allison, who worked with that farm, along with Dr. Francis Pottinger, was a medical advisor on Randall A. Farms in New York State. You heard of who he was, right? This crowd knows who Dr. Pottinger was. Francis Pottinger, the 900 cats, the Pottinger cats. And this was their mineral premix. This is the kind of minerals that, look at some of the things they were working with up there. They were working with Bromate, see strontium up there on the right hand column, uh, quarter of the way down. Sodium silicate on the very top. 
They knew about minerals in 1940 that we don't even recognize today in 1940 in Randall A. Farms. That was the cattle mineral premix along with herbs. They put herbs in those premixes. We do that now too in our premix. So that's the mineral wheel. Sorry for how bad it looks. It, it, it came out bad on the slide, but really what that shows you is a ball. And all these minerals affect all these other minerals. So this is, you know, this isn't a linear thing. This is a spherical thing where everything's connected to everything else. So calcium affects magnesium positively, adversely, phosphorus positively, adversely. So ratios are just as important as amounts. Too much of one thing creates a deficiency of another, even though there is enough of the other there. And that's why it's important to look at balance. You know, one thing you can't have too much of is balance, right? So you balance it in the soil, you balance it in the diet, and when you get the balances right, we were talking about this during the break, you know, one of the things you look at with hair mineral analysis isn't just levels, you look at ratios. Because ratios will tell you whether or not you're gonna dump certain elements that are toxic metals like cadmium or mercury or lead or arsenic. And the ratios of the positive elements affect the dumping, the elimination of the not so friendly ones. Because your body will use a toxic element if there's a deficiency of a healthy element. I'll give you an example. You see this right there. You see zinc? This is the periodic chart of elements. You see that first circle? Zinc, what's underneath it? CD is what? Cadmium. What's underneath CD? HG, which is what? Mercury. They're in the same family, which means they have similar valences. That, what does that mean? The body will use cadmium and mercury when there's a deficiency of zinc. Kind of like if you're driving down the road and your fan belt breaks, you know, and you go to some farmer and you get some baling wire and you hook up the pulleys. You could probably, if you're good enough, get it going again, but is it really not as good as a fan belt, right? You can maybe get home. And that's what happens. The body will pick up whatever it can and it'll use what it can to keep those enzyme systems functioning. But it doesn't like them because they cause damage. They have damaging effects, these metals, but it'll use them. So how do you dump these metals? Get enough of the right kinds of the nutritional metals in there, in the foods, ideally. And the body knows how to let go of stuff then, because what ha happens with the heavy metals, it'll take it out of the bloodstream where you're the most vulnerable to have heavy metals. That's why you don't find a lot of heavy metals in the bloodstream unless you're really in bad shape. Because the body will take it out and store it in soft connective tissue, neurological tissue, adipose tissue. And as you get these ratios corrected, it says, you know, it's safe to dump this stuff now. And now it can eliminate it. So you really got to get the, the ratios right. And adipose, you see on the, on the right column there, iodine is in the halogen family. What else is in there? Fluorine, fluorine, bromine, and antimony. Every one of the other ones aren't very friendly. Iodine is the one you want, but you see how much competition there is in the halogen family? So we put out these animal indicators. These are free choice minerals that we put together, and we, you know, we watch these animals. If you watch the animals, lo and behold, they just might be able to teach you something. Dumb animals. I was in a farm one time in Idaho, and the, and the dairyman there was a recent transplant from Holland, from Netherlands. Good cow man. And he was having problems with abortions. And the vet, who was a conventional thinking vet, was there. And he's saying, you know, I've got 11% abortions in my herd. And the vet said, so what? He said, what do you mean, so what? He said, that's typical around here. That's background noise, to quote him exactly. That's background noise. He said, it's not background noise to me. I don't have abortions in my herd. Something's up. So he was concerned about mold poisons in the feed, which was a good suspect. And the other thing he noticed was, he said a cow just died because when we went out to that loafing area and the vet posted the cow, opened the animal up, and here this animal was eating the manure pack in the loafing area, all right? Just what the animals compacted. That animal was being bothered by something. And I said to him, I said, if you've got mold poisons, that animal's trying to absorb those mold poisons. And I said, and so the vet said, well, you know what? He's eating all, the, the animal was contaminated with clostridium from